Check this out. We're back, and you're back, and we're here at the mailbag. We're dealing with the mail that comes here to the Dean Show. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and we've been talking about the subject of the Jews and Christians and their treatment in Islam. And what we find is in the Quran some words that are being misunderstood because of translations. Highly recommend to all of you to learn the Arabic language. If you learn the Arabic language, then people can't trick you anymore, and you'll know what it really says, okay? We have a website for that called ArabicInEnglish.com. Arabic in English.com. You can use the English you already know to start learning something about Arabic. And you'll feel a lot more comfortable. I know I do. Now let's come to the next subject. Somebody comes to us and they say, why does your book, meaning the Quran, why does your book say to kill all the Jews and Christians? <coughs> well, first of all, it doesn't say that. But still we reply back by saying, thank you for asking me about my religion. In Islam, we cannot lie. We have to tell the truth and we have the truth proof to back up what we say. But sometimes people say things that are in the question is not true. So let's deal with this. What does it say in the Quran? Actually, if we'll begin with the first instance of this in the Quran in chapter 2, called Surah Baqarah, the cow, verse 190, telling us about fighting. And it says, you fight them where they fight you. But if they stop, you stop. Because otherwise, you become the transgressor Verily, Allah does not love the transgressors. Next verse, and kill them wherever you find them, and turn them out from where they turned you out. But again, it's reminding you, you have to stop if they stop. Now, let's deal with a couple of words here. Actually, in Arabic, it really doesn't say fight, and it really doesn't say kill. No, it does and it doesn't. Let me explain why. The word fight... <clears throat> sometimes translated as slay, uh, slaughter, and things like this, doesn't really work. Let me explain why. The word in Arabic doesn't change. It's from the same root. It's kittel or kital. The first instance, it's talking about engaging in mortal combat. That's why it uses the form of this word. It's not fight like put up your dukes or martial arts or something like that. No, it's the kind of fighting that can result in death. It is combat. So use combat here and you'll see how it makes sense. Combat them if they combat you. But if they stop, then you stop. Otherwise, you're the transgressor. Move to the next verse. Kill them in combat if they're killing you in combat. But again, if they stop, you have to stop. And it, uh, it says to turn them out from where they turned you out. Now, this is another key because nowhere in here so far have we heard anything about Jews and Christians because it wasn't talking about Jews and Christians. It was saying turn them out from where they turned you out. It was particularly talking about one instance that took place in the early days when the Muslims were literally thrown out of their own homes, off of their own land, away from their own property. Their property and all of the contents was seized by these people, the pagan idolaters of Mecca, their own relatives. And their women were abused, raped, and they were killed and slaughtered, turned out into the desert, and left for over two years to die. If it weren't for the soft hearts of a few folks, they would have all died. They migrated then to Medina, a faraway city. And in that place, they were able to become stronger. There were more people that came into Islam, and they wanted to perform what is called pilgrimage or hajj to Mecca. They went, but they were turned away and said, you can't come and do your religious rituals here. Even though everybody else in the whole world could come there, all kinds of religions could come and do it, but they wouldn't let these Muslims from Medina do that. They made an agreement with them, and the agreement was very much slanted in favor of the Meccans. And yet the Meccans, even then, broke the agreement later. So the Muslims wanted to go, and they wanted to perform their holy uh, pilgrimage, or hajj, to Mecca. When they went, this time they were told by Allah in the Quran that if they engage in a fight against you, 
you can fight with them. Because one of the things about the pilgrimage they were worried about is, I can't fight, I'll be wearing two towels, and the rule is known that in the religions, all of the religions around there, when you're in the state of Ihram, or the state of pilgrimage, you're not allowed to fight. So these guys can come chop your head off, you can't do anything about it. But here comes the verse saying, no, no. If they fight you, then you can fight them back in combat. Even though you're wearing the two towels, and you can still fight. You can carry your sword with you, okay? Then, if they're killing you, even you can go to that extent. It continues, though, in the next verse after that, saying, but don't do this. Don't do this in the holy place. The holy place or the sanctuary, unless they're doing that to you there in the sanctuary. And again, you can defend yourself. And this is what it's talking about. It also uses a word in Arabic, which is fitna. It says this uh, kittel, this kind of combat and killing, is still not as bad as the fitna that's going to be caused if you don't do it. Because when people are killing you, this is a fitna. And you must respond back. So anytime there's acts of aggression or terrorism against you and the Muslims in general, then you've been ordered now to go and fight back and stop it as much as you can, and then if they stop, you have to stop. I hope this clarified some of the questions you might have on this subject, and if you have more about this, I want you to visit our internet website to get clarification. Go to the islamnewsroom.com and type in this word harsh in the box, and they'll give you the harsh questions, you get a list of them, or in this case, what you want to type in is combat to get this particular story. Until next time, this is Yusuf Estes saying peace. Peace be upon you. Wassalamu alaikum.